السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ہاؤ یو آل ڈوئنگ نحمد و نصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربنا زدنا علما How many of you had an awesome Ramadan? Had a very great Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. How many of you came out of Ramadan feeling, I could have done more? Okay. How many of you were able to make up their missed Ramadan fasts as well as additional Shawwal fasts? Okay. Those of you who weren't able to do that, did you feel you missed a great opportunity? Yeah? Yes. But you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us chances again and again and again. This is why He is Al-Halim, the one who is most tolerant. He doesn't punish us immediately. He doesn't show us the consequences of our sins, of our shortcomings, our negligence immediately. But He gives us chances again and again. And it's out of His mercy that first He gave us Ramadan. Then he gave us Shawwal. And now inshaAllah within a week will come the month of Dhul Hijjah. And Dhul Hijjah is also a very, very special time of the year. Inshallah within a week, you know what date it is today? It is the 23rd of Dhul Qadah. Many people have already left for Hajj. Others are leaving very soon. Right? So within a week, inshaAllah, the month of Dhul Hijjah will begin. And the month of Dhul Hijjah has some days which are very, very important. They are very special days of the year. And which ones are they? The first 10 days of the Hijjah. These 10 days are such that if a person performs a good deed in them, Allah loves those good deeds. In these 10 days is a day when if a person fasts, his previous sins will be forgiven. Previous sins meaning of the year before. And the sins of the coming year, so sins of two years are forgiven if he fasts on that day. In these days is a day when people go for hajj and they stand at Arafah. And when they ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah forgives them. At the end of that day, those people are as clean and pure of sins as the day their mother gave birth to them. So these are the days of Dhul Hijjah. And Many of us, obviously, most of us here are not going for Hajj this year. But that doesn't mean we miss out on this great opportunity to earn multiple rewards. And you know that knowledge is key, right? It's key to success. If you don't know, then you can't benefit. So I'm sure many of you already know about the importance of the days of the Hijjah. But this session is just a short reminder for myself and also for every one of us over here. So that as these days come, we prepare for them. And when they do come, we take the full advantage of them. So that when we finish these days, we don't have a heavy heart. We actually feel that we have accomplished something. We are happy. And on Eid day, we can truly feel that yes, it's Eid. Inshallah. Now these 10 days, they're very important and their excellence and their virtue is clearly mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. A hadith tells us that the best days in the worldly life are 10. The best days in the worldly life are 10. And they are the first 10 days of the Hijjah. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ And the 10 nights. Allah swears by them. And according to many Mufassirin, those 10 nights refer to the 10 nights and days of the Hijjah. The first 10 nights and days of the Hijjah. Now when it comes to the month of Ramadan, yes, it's very important, especially the last 10 odd nights. But when it comes to days... The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are also very important. Ibn Abbas, عنه, he said that the 10 nights which are mentioned in Surah Al-Fajr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears an oath by, they are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And he says that, that these 10 days Allah has specified for His worship, for His remembrance, that we worship Him and we remember Him in these days. In Surah Al-Hajj, Allah says, لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامِ مَعْلُومَاتِ that they should remember Allah in those known days. What are those known days? The days of the Hijjah. Another hadith tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love any deed more than He loves a deed performed in these 10 days. If a person performs a good deed in these 10 days, it is the most beloved deed to Allah. The Sahaba, they were amazed. 
So they asked that, O Messenger of Allah, not even jihad in Allah's cause? If a person performs a good deed in these days, it's better than going out in the way of Allah in jihad? The Prophet ﷺ said, not even jihad in Allah's cause, no. Except for the one who goes out with his wealth and his life and does not return with any. How many of us do you think are capable of doing that? We're not. Right? Especially as women. But are we able to perform good deeds in the days of the Hijjah? Are we? Yes, inshallah we can. So this is a great opportunity for us to perform deeds which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, which He will reward abundantly. And you know, whenever you have a relationship with anyone you can think of, it's always a two-way relationship. It's about how much importance you give to them and how much importance they give to you. Right? So in these days, you want to perform as many good deeds as possible so that Allah loves you. If Allah will love your deeds, then He will also love you. So this is the time to earn a very high rank in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what's the reason? Why are these days so special? They're just 10 days of a month. Yes, this month is the month of Hajj. Yes, this month is of the sacred months. But what's so special? Why is it that a good deed performed in these days is so beloved to Allah? One of the reasons the scholars have given is that in this month and in only this month and in only these, these 10 days, all of the various acts of worship can be performed. Which acts of worship? Salah, zakat, fasting, and also hajj. You can fast any other time of the year. You can give charity, you can give zakat any other time of the year. So can you pray, but can you perform hajj any time of the year? No, you can only perform hajj in Dhul Hijjah, in these days. So this is the reason why these days are so special. It's like everything together. You know, just imagine you go to a big store and as you walk in, they give you a huge coupon, 20% off. Okay, for you, because you got that coupon, and then you have another coupon from before. So all of the coupons added up, you get a huge discount on whatever you're buying. Right? So this is just like that. All of the benefits are, you know, together. They're joined together for you to take as much advantage as possible. Then we also see that in these days is Hajj, and Hajj itself is also very important. Because of Hajj, these days are important. How important is Hajj? How important is it? It's a pillar of Islam. Okay. Any other importance, any other virtue, reward, benefit of Hajj, except that it costs a lot of money that people are afraid of, that people don't want to spend? Any other benefits? Yes. Yes. If a person's Hajj is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this will be a means of forgiveness for all of his sins. Hajj mabrur. The reward is nothing but Jannah. Any other benefit you can think of? I'll tell you something. A hadith tells us that those people who go out in jihad and those people who go for hajj, they are Allah's guests. Those who go for jihad and those who go for hajj and umrah, who are they? They are Allah's guests. Allah called them and they responded. So when they will ask Allah, Allah will give them. Whatever they will ask Him, Allah will give to them. Another hadith tells us that he who performs that Hajj destroys all past sins. It destroys all past sins. Another hadith tells us that three types of people are in the protection and pledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He who goes to a masjid, he who goes for jihad, and he who goes to perform Hajj. So yes, we know about Hajj, we know about how important it is, and every Muslim should have the desire, the yearning to go for Hajj. But, Obviously, it's not feasible for every person to go every single year. So just because we're not there doesn't mean we cannot take advantage. No, we can take advantage. We can do many other good things, which inshallah we will discuss very soon. Another reason that scholars have given as to why these days are very important is that because in these days is Yawmul Arafah. And it was on Yawmul Arafah that the religion of Islam was completed. When the Prophet ﷺ went for Hajj on Yawmul Arafah, that is where the verse was revealed, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ That today I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as religion. 
So when our religion was completed, meaning it was fully and completely revealed, everything was firmly established in the religion, on Yawmul Arafah, then that means that that day is very special. You know, if people get married on a particular day, then they remember that day for the rest of their lives. Every year they have an anniversary. Right? So the day when Islam was completed, of course, it's a big deal for us. In the days when that day, in the month that that day came, in those, in that ashara when that day came, obviously that ashara is also very, very important. Then also this is important because in these days is Yawmul Arafah. What is Yawmul Arafah? The day of Arafah. Huh? What is Yawmul Arafah? The day when the Hujjaj, they stand in Arafah. And that is the day when the religion was completed. And this is the day when the people are released from hellfire. Meaning Allah forgives them. A hadith tells us there is no day on which Allah frees more people from the fire than the day of Arafah. There is no day in which Allah frees more people from the fire than the day of Arafah. That is the day when people are forgiven. And which day is it? It is the ninth of the Hijjah. And Allah expresses His pride before the angels because of all the people who are standing at Arafah and begging for His forgiveness. Allah shows His pride, His happiness before the angels. He boasts before them and He says, what do these people want? He's so happy with all those people standing there begging for His forgiveness. He says, what do these people want? What do they want? They want His forgiveness, right? So Allah is willing to forgive them provided that they want that forgiveness. They yearn for that forgiveness. So Allah releases them from hellfire. It is as though they are freed. And those who are not there, what should they do? They should fast. And with regards to that fast, the Prophet ﷺ said that fasting on the day of Arafah expiates the sins of the preceding year and the coming year. So sins of two years are forgiven. And that's a great benefit. Because you know that sins have consequences in our lives, right? Sooner or later. So, Seeking forgiveness through making dua, but also through actions. And one of those actions is fasting on the day of Arafah. Then also these days are special because in these days is the 10th of the Hijjah, which is Yawmun Nahr. The day of, do you know what that day is? Sacrifice. The day of offering sacrifice. Which we call the day of Eid. Right? Is sacrifice important? What is it by the way? What is Yawmun Nahr? What do people do on that day? The Hajjaj and also those who are not doing Hajj, what do they do? Hmm? They slaughter an animal. Why? To earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We translate it as sacrifice. What does sacrifice mean? Okay, you give from what you love. Why? To seek something that's more important to you. That's far more superior. That's far greater. So in order to prove our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to do something too, right? We have to show that, that, oh Allah, I'm willing to give anything for your sake. I'm willing to give up anything to please you, to satisfy you. People show their commitment to others by doing the craziest of things, right? By doing most difficult things. They show that they are committed. They show that they they do give importance to the other individual. Now we as Muslims, we believe or we know, that's what we tell ourselves, that Allah is number one priority in my life. But don't we forget this? Do we forget this? Yes, we do. We forget this. We know that technically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be number one priority in our lives, but there are times when we want to sleep and we don't want to pray and we don't want to read Quran and we don't want to fast and we don't want to do anything good. We just want to take it easy. Right? There are times when we prefer others over Allah. We want to talk to somebody else instead of reciting Quran or instead of making adhkar. Right? It happens. So when Yawm nahr comes, it reminds us that look, you are slaughtering an animal. You are shedding blood basically. You are giving a life. Right? Not human life, animal life. Why? To show that, oh Allah, I can do anything for you. And it reminds us of who? Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam. When Allah told Ibrahim alayhi salam he had to slaughter his son, he didn't say, but why my son? Why not something else? And why do I have to slaughter? Can I not do something else? Can I not do something different? He didn't object. 
Neither did his son object. Both of them willingly and readily went on to do the job. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their efforts. And He replaced that slaughter with another slaughter, right? Of a, of a ram. So it reminds us of that story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, of his example of, of sacrifice, of doing, of Islam, of submitting for the sake of Allah. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So we have to show that. We have to prove that too. This is why Allah says, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ That pray to your Lord and also sacrifice for His sake. So that is the day when people offer sacrifice and this is why these days are so special. They are so important. And with regards to sacrifice, we learn from the Qur'an that the blood of the animals does not reach Allah and the flesh of the animals also does not reach Allah. What reaches Allah? The taqwa of your heart. The sincerity, the piety, the fear of Allah with which you have performed that action. So that is what matters. And that is a lesson that we take for the rest of our year as well. Because the hijjah is the last month, right? So for the next year, that is a lesson that we take. And with regards to sacrifice, Offering sacrifice for the sake of Allah. This is something that's very important. It, this should not be neglected. Okay, Just as hajj is something special that is to be performed in these days, sacrifice is also a ritual that is to be performed in these days. It doesn't mean that you don't sacrifice for the rest of the year, you do. But it is a special ritual for these days. right? And a person who is capable of performing that ritual, but still he does not, it's a very serious matter. A hadith tells us that he who does not perform the ritual sacrifice despite having the means should not even come near the place of our Eid Salah. He should not even come close to that place. He should stay away. So if we are able, then we must definitely make an effort to do this. And you know that when you go for groceries, the money goes like this, right? All of a sudden, a hundred dollars, they go nowhere. You go to Costco and where does all your money go? It disappears very quickly, right? But you don't feel bad purchasing all those things. Why? Because you know that you need them. What do you tell yourself? Yes, I've spent almost $300 in Costco today, but I need all that laundry detergent. I need all of those cleaners. I need all of that toilet paper, right? That's what you tell yourself. I need all those chocolates, right? I need all that candy. That's what we tell ourselves. So likewise, when it comes to offering sacrifice, yes, it could be a little expensive, but what should you tell yourself? I need to do this to earn the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to do this to show my love to my Lord, to show my commitment. I need to do this. I have to. And where there's love, then money doesn't matter. Isn't it so? Wherever there's love, you don't mind spending money. I remember I came across this young boy once and his mother was telling me that he's working on the weekends. And he was still in high school. He was working on the weekends and the evenings and the summer. And she told me that he doesn't even make that much money, but still he just wants to work. I said, why? Because when he goes out with his friends, he wants to spend on them. He likes to pay for dinner. I was like, very good. You know, everybody should befriend him. So he was basically working. Why? So that he could spend easily on his friends. Right? Or with his friends. So wherever there's friendship and there's love, you don't count the money. You don't count the pennies. You don't count the cents. No. You spend easily. So likewise, when it comes to Yawmun Nahr, when it comes to sacrifice, to slaughtering the animal, then we must also do the same. Now, because these days are so special, any deed that is performed in these days, you know, Allah loves that, rewards it abundantly. In these days is Hajj. In these days, there are people who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've left their homes, everything. They've gone all the way to Mecca to worship Allah. Then what should we do in these days? Remember Allah. Remember Allah. Glorify Him. We learn from a hadith that there is no day more glorious in the sight of Allah and during which deeds are more beloved to Him than these ten days. So during these days, because they are so glorious, what should you do? The Prophet ﷺ said, frequently, frequently say, La ilaha illallah. Frequently say, Allahu Akbar. And frequently say, Alhamdulillah. Do you know these three as well? Do you know them? La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. And Alhamdulillah. I'm not talking about La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd. I mean, yes, those azkar are also there. But generally what happens, we say, oh, I don't know it by heart. 
right? And we find it too difficult to open up a book or to read it off a paper. But these adhkar, all of us know, La ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar, alhamdulillah. So can we make sure that we say these during these 10 days? Yes. How should we say them? How should we say them? When will you say them? Hmm? All the time? But how will you remember to say them? Say them out loud. Okay. Say them, for example, after salah. Say them when you are doing the dishes, when you're ironing your hijab to come to school. Okay. When you're sitting in the car, when you're waiting for your ride to come. Don't just sit there and stare into space. No. Use your tongue. Remember Allah. Glorify Allah. Because remember, any good deed you do, Allah loves that. More than jihad fi sabilillah. More than jihad fi sabilillah. So make sure that you do these azkar. And also say them out loud. Because when you will say them out loud, then other people will also remember. And you know, some companions, that's what they would do. They would go out to the marketplace and they would say out the takbirat loudly. So that other people, when they would hear them, they would also remember to say. So write them on a piece of paper, stick them onto, onto your refrigerator, on your door, wherever, you know, put it as, as a background on your phone, on your computer, so that every time you open your screen, you unlock your phone. La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Because you want to take the maximum advantage of the, of this time. And also, takbirat. Glorifying Allah. Mentioning His greatness. You know about the takbirat? That you hear all the time. Right? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar kabira. Walhamdulillahi kathira. Wa subhanallahi bukratan. Wa asila. Also teach them to children. Teach them to children. And they will pick up very quickly and they will also remind you. Huh? What you can do is there are many videos on YouTube as well that have the takbirat. Play them. Your children will learn. The children who are in the house, they will learn. Okay? Your siblings, your spouse, your parents, your children, wh- whoever relatives you have in your house, even they will pick up inshallah. And this is the best way of teaching others. You know, sometimes we want to teach others by saying, by the way, we had a talk today in class on Dhul Hijjah, so when the days begin, make sure that you say Allahu Akbar. If you tell somebody like, you know, sir, listen to me, I'm teaching you something, they're going to become all defensive. Teach with your actions. When you will say takbirat, others will follow you inshallah, or at least they will be curious. And whenever you say the takbirat, remember this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, no one ever said the talbiyah except that he was given good news. No one ever said Allahu Akbar except that he was given good news. What is talbiyah? That the hujjad say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَ لَبَّيْكَ What is takbirat? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That you will say here when you're not at hajj in the days of the hijjah. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, good news of Jannah? He said, yes. Good news of Jannah. So every time you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, it's as though you are being given good news of Jannah. That is a big deal. So busy your tongue in mentioning the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days. You know, all of us want to be acknowledged for whatever we are doing, whatever we are working on, right? We want to be appreciated for whatever little things that we are doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is greater than anyone. Anyone. What he has done is the best. He is Al-Muhsin. So he deserves that we declare his glory. We mention his greatness. So in these days, busy yourself in mentioning the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quickly, some of the things that good deeds that we can focus on in these days, because we want to do as many good deeds as possible in these days, right? So, Make a list of these things. What can you do to improve your salah? Salah, fasting, your Qur'an, your dhikr, your dua, your sadaqa, benefiting other people. What can you do for that? So when it comes to salah, what can you do? How can you make your salah better? You're praying anyway. What extra thing can you do in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah to earn extra good deeds? What can you do? First of all, perform as early as possible. Then, renew your effort of bringing about khushur in your salah. Many times when we try a few times to have khushur, to concentrate in our prayer, to pray with humility and submissiveness, we say, oh, you know what? I have failed at having khushur in my salah, so never mind. No. Try again. Start again. 
Read more Quran. Read different, different surahs that you've memorized in the salah. Say your sunnah. Say the nafil as well. Right? For example, ishraq or duha. Right? Perform that. When it comes to fasting, make sure you fast on the ninth of the hijjah because what's the reward? The sins of the previous and the following year, forgiven insha'Allah. If you have any fasts to make up from the month of Ramadan or before that even, make them up now. What intention should you have? That you're making up your previous fasts, but the point is that you're fasting. It would be very good if you were fasting extra voluntary fasts, but if you cannot do that, the point is that you're fasting, right? So that's good enough insha'Allah. Then, Quran. What are you going to do about Quran? Recite Quran every single day. Frequently recite Quran. And remember that every letter, 10 good deeds. Now imagine, your recitation is even more beloved to Allah in this time. To take more advantage. If you've memorized some Quran previously, revise it now. If you're able to memorize more, memorize one or two more surahs. Listen to the Quran a lot. Listen to it in the car. You know, Alhamdulillah, you've studied half a juz. Now make a point that you listen to that entire half juz. Okay? Make a point to do that. And if possible, listen to the entire juz as well. Dhikr and dua. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do more. Tahleel. La ilaha illallah. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Tahmeed. Alhamdulillah. Make sure you say the morning and evening adhkar. And excessively do istighfar. Because this is the time when Allah forgives people. So seek forgiveness from Him. Send peace and blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ as much as possible. Make dua at the time of acceptance. When it comes to charity and almsgiving, give something in the way of Allah. Spend. You know about the food bank over here? What's the goal? One ton. So what are you doing about that? Make sure you put your share in that inshallah. And remember, like we learned earlier, sacrifice. Right? If you say, oh, I can't afford to give sacrifice. Oh, my parents are. You know, they're doing it. I'm not doing it. But it's from the whole family. But what are you doing? There's got to be something that you love. Maybe it's that chocolate bar that's sitting in your, you know, in your drawer. And you think oh, every day, I'm going to have it tomorrow. I'm going to have it when such and such happens. You know, you've been saving that. You really, really love it. Give it to somebody else. And give it for the sake of Allah, to earn reward from Allah. It doesn't have to be something very expensive. Something that you love. Give that in the way of Allah to show your love to Allah. And then spend on others as well, those who are around you. Spend in the way of Allah. And also social welfare, meaning also do something to benefit the community because that's also a very important good deed. Volunteer, help out somewhere in whatever way that you can. There are some people whom you know are unwell, visit them. Somebody who's sick, who needs help, somebody who's elderly, help them in some way. But with the intention that I want to do something good in these days, because Allah will love that deed, inshaAllah. Now, whatever you have written, okay, make sure that you share that with others as well. And brainstorm more ideas. There are many good things that you can do. Set goals for yourself like you did for the month of Ramadan, and achieve them and also share them with other people, inshaAllah. I'd like to conclude over here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to really benefit from this month, especially these days that we take advantage of every opportunity and we stay away from anything that could upset Allah. Because this is the time of coming close to Allah and not upsetting Him. Right? It would be very tragic if we did something to upset Allah in these days. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to really earn His closeness in these days and also to act upon whatever we have learned and also share it with others as well. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته